Tropical system. Let's get to this. I love talking to this guy right here. It was a week ago. What was it? Uh, it was last year at this time. The barrel came slamming in. That was that hurricane that went from a tropical storm to a category five last year in 42 hours. It was a storm that rapidly intensified. It ramped up its speed in about no time at all. Right now, we've got the aftermath of Chantal going across the East Coast. That did not rapidly intensify. That is some good news. But I want to talk to Mike Boylan, the storm chaser and blogger behind Mike's weather page. You're back again, my friend. I like to talk to you about this stuff. And we're talking about rapid intensification, my friend. Something you're intimately aware of being in barrel last year. Yeah, something about this Gulf of Mexico. Or golf. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I know. It's the last several I'm years. With you. I'm I, with you. you know, well, I'm a weather blogger. You know, I try to stay as neutral as possible. Yeah, right. um, but but uh, yeah, we've just seen so much uh, storms the last few years, you know, coming up that Gulf Stream, uh, loop currents, loop mm -hmm. eddies. Just, just you know, two days before the tropical storms, two days later, they're cat four, cat five. So it's, it's definitely a phenomenon that's. Um, this crazy to watch. Yeah, let's let's talk about it. What what makes the rapid intensification? Now, it has a, a pure definition. It has to gain 35 miles per hour of maximum sustained winds in 24 hours. But what are the atmospheric conditions that make that happen? Now, a lot of things have to come together, right? Yeah, totally. I think I think the water temperature is number one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have a shallow shelf here on the Gulf side that uh, I think really keeps that ocean heat content at the surface levels. Uh, and of course, you know, this season, this time of the year, we have the dust. Now, last year with barrel, that was an anomaly. You know, that was definitely a storm that yeah. uh, broke all kinds of records. Um, it was Cat 5 you know, before the Caribbean on July 1st. So, I mean, that was unheard of. Yep. Uh, but yeah, definitely, you know, light wind shear. That's another, another thing. Once these fronts seem to stop coming south, you know, we get a lot more stable air and less wind shear. And these systems just have a chance to, you know, they get an anti-cyclone setting up high pressure spin. Um, and it just you know, you get stacking and, and these storms just have the ability to just, you know, and then the MJO, I don't know if you all talk a lot about that. Yeah, sure. Another, Up, you know, the, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So all that, it seems like it stacks up every time we get one of these perfect storms, uh, it, everything's lined up. It's such a good point. You get the MJO, which is a big, it's like an unsettled atmosphere of thunderstorms. It circumnavigates a globe every, every about 30 to 90 days, depending on how fast it's moving. But if that sets up shop over, you means you get the rising air all across that region. And then if you add to it the humidity that could be in play across the Gulf of America, forget about it. It could be mm. game time like Milton last year. Well, totally. Well, they have moisture. Like you just mentioned the dew points in the mm -hmm. Carolinas. Um, we just have, you know, tremendous heat. We get these heat domes. Uh, I've always talked in the past with storms like Irma and Ian and Idalia, uh, the I call it a hurricane heat. Like being living in Tampa here, we we get a high pressure that sets up, it seems like, which is the beginning of, of a storm brewing to our south in the Caribbean. And it's just everything kind of lines up with the steering flow, the, the outflow of front coming down that it feeds into. You know, I've seen that a lot lately. Mm -hmm. uh, you get a frontal boundary coming south and, and a rotating counterclockwise storm pulls into that. And you get, you know, you get these long jet stream looking systems attached to a hurricane in the in the Gulf and uh, that just magnifies the moisture levels. Ian was the last one I can really remember right. that, that pulled in that upper juice, you know, and really yeah. magnified the floods. It really, and you can see it on the satellite when it just blossoms, it gets that nice round picture to it. So that's the rapid intensification. Mike, let's talk about the storms that don't have rapid intensification that mm -hmm. don't even have a hurricane number attached to it. They could do just as much damage. We just had Barry pull through and that dropped all the humidity across Texas. And we saw what that happened. We had all the thunderstorms develop. Yeah, I, I do a lot of hurricane presentations, and I think that's the number one topic is it's only a tropical storm or it's just mm -hmm. a Category 1. There, there seems to be a lot of that. Uh, I, I've probably thought that a lot over the years myself. Uh, we, all, we all get wrapped up in the wind speeds. But when it comes down to, to costly devastation and, and, unfortunately, fatalities, water is everything. I right. mean, 90%-ish of you know, water deaths with with storm systems um you know we we saw florence a couple of years ago it was a four out in the atlantic and it kind of irked me a little bit because every breaking news you know downgraded downgraded right. downgraded and it, right. and it hit hit as a one mm -hmm. and i remember people put their pom-poms out like oh man this thing's downgraded <laughs> and it turned out to be a 24 billion dollars you know category one um 
So yeah, it doesn't take a big bad you You're know so category right. storm. I was I was in uh, Wilmington, North Carolina for Florence, and it was like category four. Not down to category one. I'm like I'm still not happy about that. It's still <laughs> category one coming at me. But I'm thinking other Mike storms like back in it was 2001. We had tropical storm Allison that set up shop right around Houston. That dropped 40 inches right. of rain as a tropical storm in three days. So it doesn't take a huge storm to cause that havoc for sure. I mean, I, I, I think we've all learned over the years, you know, um, these little slow moving tropical systems are just everything. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they just sit, they stall. You know, we had Debbie a couple uh, many years now back yep. in the, you know, that affected Florida. And it was a similar storm. It just sat. And it seems like these systems that sit. Um, they're the or worst. The ones we knew to watch. Yeah. yeah, Mike, and it was Harvey too when I was in Houston covering that one in Harvey. Katy, Texas. I couldn't even get into Houston because it was raining so hard. Mike, man, it is always great to talk to you, my friend. And you got an open invitation. Anytime I want to talk hurricanes, I'm there for you, my friend. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I really enjoy it. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, man. I'll talk to you next week, hopefully. All right. Yep. You All got right, it. Buddy. Sounds good, man.